Okay, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at polynomials. Okay, so we're going to start off by looking at factorising quadratics. So we've got a few different um, techniques and methods that we can try out here that, as I've got um, shown. So we have perfect squares. So if we have a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared, then that can be factorised to a plus or minus b. So for example, if this is plus, that will be plus, this is take that we take. Uh, the second one is difference of two of oh, perfect squares, sorry, which is where we have a squared take b squared, and that factorizes to a minus b uh, times a plus b. Okay, we also have the method of completing the square, which I'll do an example of uh, in a little bit, because this one probably is a little bit better demonstrated with an example. Okay, and that's where we have a, uh, x squared plus bx plus c, and that factorizes to x plus b on 2 all squared, take b on 2 squared plus c, or if we have a uh, x squared uh, plus bx plus c, then that becomes a outside of x take b on 2 squared, take b on 2a squared plus c on a, that should be. Okay, and uh, I'm putting it in here now, but uh, we revisit the general quadratic formula a little bit later on. Okay, because that's if we have ax squared plus bx plus c, then x will equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared take 4ac on 2a. Okay, that's more about solving for x rather than factorising, uh, but most of the time we factorise to then solve anyway, so it's no big deal. Okay, and the other uh, method, which unless we kind of fall into these two ones, okay, we always try first before we go into completing the square of the general quadratic formula, is trial and error. Okay, so we're trying to find factors of our ax squared and our c that when combined will give us our middle term bx. Okay, so we'll look at a uh, worked example. We'll do one of these ones first, our trial and error. So we'll flip over the page. So for example, if we were wanting to factorise x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, well then we look at our factors of x squared. Well, that's nice, that's just x and x. We don't have too many options here. Okay, then we look at our factors of our six. Well, that's gonna be one and six and three and two. Okay, and we need to think, okay, well, to get this number here, okay, we're gonna multiply these two factors together. And this is a negative, so one of these must be a negative. Okay, since overall, this middle term is negative, Okay, then that means that our larger of our two terms is going to be negative. Okay, and you should be able to see that it's going to end up being this one here because we're only negative 1. If it was, say, negative uh, 5x, then it would have been this one. Okay, so you can see that when we factorise that, we'll have x and we'll be, uh, as I said, take 3 and x plus 2. Okay, another way I like to write this is when we're starting here is set up what you know we're going to have. We have bracket, something, bracket, x, and then start writing down what you can have. So you can have a 1 and a 6, or a 3 and a 2, and then work out your signs from there. Now when it gets more complicated is when we have um, coefficients of x squared. Okay, they can become a, uh, a bit more of a problem. So we'll have a look at uh, one of the worked examples. This is worked example 1b. Okay, and we're going to factorise 6x squared, take 17x plus 7. Okay, because the problem that we've got here is we've got lots of options for in our brackets. Okay, so what we've got is we've, we have our 6x squared. Okay, so our factors of that, well, we could have 6x and x. Okay, could have... 3x and 2x, right? And we can actually uh, potentially have the opposites uh, of them written around the other way, but usually if you set these ones, then allow your factors here to change. So we could have a 1 and a 7, or we could have a 7 and a 1. Okay, we've got to get to 17x, okay, in the middle, negative 17x in the middle, okay? So most of the time with these things, you'll find uh, that the 6 
X and the X doesn't happen that often. So I'd usually always go for these ones. And look, it's, it's just the way that we tend to make questions that we don't have many that are this combination, but it doesn't mean that you can't have them. And be aware of that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll assume that we're going to be 3X and 2X. Okay, now we know we can either have a 1 here or a 7 there. Okay, and we need to think about what's happening here. We've got a negative here and a positive here. So what that means, okay, is both of these are going to need to be negative. Because when we multiply together, we'll get our positive 7. And when we add together, we'll get our negative 17. So we can put in that we're going to be negatives. Now, we just need to see what would happen. So if we had, say, 1 here okay, in this one and 7 in this one, then we go 3 times 1. It's obviously 3. Okay, And if we had 7 here, then we've got our 7 times our 2 gives us our 14. It's going to look all right. So our negative 7 and our 1. Okay, so again, if you need to double check this, it's really easy, we just expand our brackets. So we know our 3x by our 2x gives us our 6x squared. And then we've got 3x by negative 1 gives us negative 3x. And negative 7 by 2x will give us negative 14x plus our 7. And we see that we've got 6x squared, take 17x plus 7 as required. Now we could have got this around the wrong way and put our 1 there and our 7 there. It would just come out in the mix that it wouldn't have been right. That we would have been going 3 times our 7 is 21 and then an extra 2 would have given us 23. So it wouldn't have worked out. Okay. Um, we'll have a quick look at one where we've got to complete the square. Okay. I'll just make up one for this one. Um, so let's say we've got x squared take 7x plus 4. Okay, now I'll just make it up. Okay, I'm assuming it wouldn't work. Uh, just to factorise normally, and you'd think it wouldn't. Okay, because factors of 4 are 4 and 1 and 2 and 2. So you can see that that's not going to go into there nicely. Okay, so if we were to complete the square. Okay, actually, I'll just make that plus. Just make it a little bit easier just to see the first one. Okay, so what happens is we go x. Okay, plus we halve this term. So 7 on 2 squared, okay, and we take away the same thing, squared again, and then add on our 4. Now the reason why we do that is if we were to expand out this, we'd have x plus 7 on 2, so I'd have x plus 7 on 2. Okay, if we expand that out, well we'd get our x squared, and then we'd have our 7 on 2x, and another 7 on 2x. That's nice, when we add them together, then we'll get our uh, 7x, which is good, but then we also have a 7 on 2 squared. We don't want that, okay? We don't want that because we didn't have that up here, so we've got to take it away again to get rid of it, okay? Uh, so that's your idea with our completing the square. So um, once we get to here, then okay, if you can, you simplify. I don't think this one's going to work out too nicely because we'd be, take 49 on 4, plus 4. Okay, it doesn't work out that nicely. I'm not going to keep going with uh, simplifying this. Oh, actually, I should. Okay, hopefully you get ones that are a little bit nicer. Okay, because we take 49 on 4, okay, plus 16 on 4, which means we're x plus 7 on 2 squared. Okay, negative 49 plus 16 will get us to negative 33 on 4. Okay, and we'd be done. Okay, so that's our completing the square. So we'll flip over and we'll look at factorization of higher degree polynomials. Okay, so uh, these are our cubics, quartics, things like that. Okay, so to start off with, we'll be looking at uh, just some cubics. Okay, so if we had a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Well, that's a perfect cube, so it can be factorised at a plus b cubed. Similarly, if we've got a cubed, take 3a squared b plus 3ab squared take b cubed, then that can be factorised as a take b cubed. Okay, sum and difference of two cubes, okay, it's similar to these ones. Okay, um, so we're saying that another way of looking at if we've got 
A cubed plus B cubed, well that can be factorised to A plus B outside of A squared take AB plus B squared. And similarly, uh, A cubed take B cubed equals A take B outside of A squared plus AB plus B squared. Okay, so they're just some nice little rules to remember. Another approach that we can take, and this doesn't always work, okay, is factorising cubics by grouping. Okay, by grouping. So what we do here is we've got the cubic x, uh, sorry, x cubed take 3x squared plus 4x take 12. So we put in two groups, this first group and this second group. Okay, because this first group we can factorise by taking out x squared, which gives us x squared outside of x take 3. And this one we can factorise by taking 4 out, which leaves us with 4 outside of x take 3. As you can see now we've got this common factor of x take 3. So then we can finish it off by factorising it to x take 3 outside of x squared plus 4. Okay, so it works out quite nicely, won't always work for you. Okay, we can also do it uh, with a group of 3 and just a single thing. So we had x squared uh, plus 4x plus 4 take z squared. So we look at this and we go, okay, well that's uh, a perfect square. So we can say we've got x take 2 squared take z squared. Now because we've got uh, 2 cubed, uh, 2, sorry, two squares, okay, we make it x plus two take z times x plus two plus z. So that was from some of our rules earlier. Okay. All right, so what we'll do is we'll have a little look at one of those ones. Okay. So, okay, we'll start off with if we had m squared take n squared take 36 take 12 n. Okay, so we're looking at that one. Okay, so we're going to group the polynomial 1 and 3. Okay, and we're going to rearrange and take uh, negative 1 as a common factor. So what we're going to look at is going, well, we'll have our m squared, okay, take n squared, take 12n, take 36. Okay, so all I've done there is just rearrange it. Okay, then what we're going to do is go, well, have m squared and then we'll take n squared plus 12 n plus 36. So all we've done is taking out negative 1 as a common factor. Okay, then we see, well this is a perfect square here. So we can say we've got m squared take n plus 6 squared. Okay, to factorise that one. Okay, and we can add uh, apply our difference of two perfect squares here as well. So we keep going and say that we get m take n plus six outside of m uh, plus n plus six. And in the textbook there's a mistake in this worked example. They actually at this step they have it written as n by an accident. Okay. And then to finish it off, we can say that it's m take n take 6 and m plus n plus 6 to fully factorise it. Okay, I've looked at one more where we've got uh, sorry, p cubed plus 2p squared take 4p take 8. Okay, so we're going to group it in twos this time, so one group and a second group. So this first group will take out p squared, p squared outside of p plus 2. Okay, and our second group, we're going to take out negative 4, so then we end up with take 4 outside of p plus 2. So we end up with p, sorry, end up with p plus 2 and P squared take 4. Okay, which means we can go P plus 2 and then P plus 2 P take 2. Okay, expanding out this. Okay, because um, we've got the difference of two squares there. So you can see that we've actually got here P plus 2 squared and take 2. Okay, so we don't like it when we've got our squared inside our brackets, that's why we've changed this part here and expanded it out. Okay, 
we're fine if we've got a squared outside of our brackets, it just means this, uh, this term is repeated. We don't like our squared inside our brackets. We're gonna keep doing a little bit of work there. Okay, we'll keep going on. So our factor theorem. Okay, a factor theorem is a polynomial P of X has a factor X take A if and only if P of A equals zero. Okay, so we use that to fully factorize uh, some of our higher order um, polynomials. Okay, so uh, what we do is basically we pick numbers to put in our polynomial that we've given till we find one that equals zero. Okay, so we know that we've got a factor. So we're gonna have a look at work example four. Okay, which is we want to fully factorize x to the four take four x cubed. Okay, take x squared plus sixteen x take twelve. Okay, uh, so to save some time, find that if we put in 1 into this equation, okay, they equal 0, therefore x take 1 is a factor. Okay, so put 1 in there, it equals 0, therefore x take 1 is a factor. Notice a here was positive, but inside our brackets it's negative, we change our signs. Okay, so what we do then, so we do division of polynomials. Okay, so we do x minus one, okay, which is our factor that we knew, into our x to the four, take four x cubed, take x squared, plus 16 x, take 12. Okay, so we start off with, okay, how many x's into x to the four? Well, there's x cubed, Okay, multiply back around, so x cubed times x gives us x to the 4, x cubed times negative 1 gives us negative x cubed. Okay, or we say bracket, bracket, take away, line underneath. So x to the 4 take, x to the 4 is 0, negative 4 x cubed take negative, same as adding. Okay, so add x cubed gives us negative 3 x cubed. Now bring everything else down. Okay, take x squared plus 16x, take 12. Now we do it again. So how many x's in negative three x cubed? Well, that gives us negative three x squared. Multiply back around, give us negative three x cubed plus three x squared. Bracket, bracket, take away line underneath. Negative three x squared, so 3x cubed, take negative 3x cubed gives us zero. We always want that. Okay, take away, and we've got negative x squared, take away 3x squared will give us negative 4x squared. Bring down the rest, plus 16x, take 12. Okay, how many x's into negative 4x squared gives us negative 4x. Multiply back through, gives us negative 4x squared. And then negative 4x times negative 1 gives us plus 4x. Okay, bracket, bracket, take away, line underneath. This one gives us zero. 16x, take 4x gives us 12x. Okay, take away 12, bring the, the 12 down. Okay, then how many x's in 12x? Well, there's 12, multiply back through, gives us 12x, take 12, bracket, bracket, take away, line underneath. We can see that we've got 12x take 12x is 0 and then negative 12 take negative 12 is also 0 so we know that we've done everything right because we want this to be 0 because this is a factor. Okay, if we'd stuffed up with our calculations here okay, and thought that it was a factor if it wasn't then we would have had a number here or a remainder left over. Okay, so what we're going to do now though is keep going. We've got to factorise our x cubed one. So we've got to now factorise x cubed cube take 3x squared take 4x plus 12 okay so we need to find a factor again okay and to save some time if we put 2 in here we find that 2 means that it equals 0 therefore x take 2 is a factor okay so now we've got to go well, we've got x take 2 into our x cubed take 3x squared take 4x plus 12. Okay, so 
So we go, how many x's in x cubed? Well, there's x squared. 8 multiplied back through gives us x cubed. Take 2x squared. Bracket, bracket, take away line underneath. This gives us 0. Negative 3x squared. Take negative 2x squared. So that same as adding. Gives us negative x squared. Okay. Then we bring everything else down. We get negative 4x plus 12. Then we go, how many x is in negative x squared? Well, negative x. Okay, multiply back through. Negative x squared plus 2x. Bracket, bracket, take away line underneath. This part gives us 0. Negative 4x, take 2x will give us negative 6x. Okay, bring our 12 down. Okay, x into negative 6x gives us negative 6. Multiply back through, gives us negative 6x okay, uh, plus 12. Bracket, bracket, take away line underneath. Negative 6x plus 6x is 0. 12 take 12 is also 0. So we're good there. Okay, so we're getting there. Okay, because we now know okay, that we've got x take 1, x take 2, and we're left with x squared take x take 6. Okay, so we're going to finish that off. Okay, we actually factorised this one earlier. Okay, remember it was negative 3 and positive 2. Okay, and we've fully factorised it. Okay, so I know there's a fair bit of work there, but um, it's the way we've got to do it, unfortunately. Okay, so when we find a factor, we do division of polynomials. Okay, find a factor of what was left over. Okay, do division of polynomials again till we can get down to a quadratic and go from there. Worst case scenario then is you may need to do general quadratic for formula or something alike. Okay, it's almost there. Okay, we need to talk again just briefly about the general quadratic formula. Okay, so remember, uh, that's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared take 4ac over 2a. Okay, now the discriminant is represented by delta and it's what's inside the square root sign. So our b squared take 4ac. The discriminant tells us about um, the nature and the quantity of our solutions. So if this is a positive number, okay, then we're going to get two real solutions. Okay, so basically this will be uh, some positive number, so the square root of it will be a number. And so we'll get one solution where we have plus our discriminant, or the square root of our discriminant, and one answer where we have uh, it take the square root of our discriminant. Okay, if, there, if it's equal to zero, then this bit can, cancels out completely, and we're just left with our negative b over 2a. So there's only one solution. Okay. If this bit is a negative number, well, we can't take the square roots of the negative numbers, so there's no real solution. Okay, and guys doing specialists will understand that that's where we move into our complex numbers. Okay, there's only one last part that uh, we need to look at, and uh, one last work example, and that's the quality of polynomials. So basically, two polynomials uh, are equal if everything's the same. Okay, all our coefficients have to be the same for them to be equal. Okay, so we've got a worked example regarding that. Okay, so we're saying if m, uh, sorry, if mx to the 4 plus n minus 3x cubed plus m plus p x squared plus P plus Q of X equals 2X to the 4, take 2X cubed plus X squared. Okay, then we've got to find the values of our M, N, P, and Q. Okay, so we're going to find those values. Okay, so we need a, a what we do is straight away, we, uh, the only way that we are going to get, okay, our coefficient of x to the 4, okay, is here on this side. And we know that that is equal to, oh, sorry, negative 2. Okay, so we know that m has to equal negative 2 from the word go. Okay, so that means that we've got negative 2x to the 4 plus our n take 3x cubed. 
cubed a plus negative 2 plus p, because we know m is negative 2 now, x squared plus p plus q x, so I don't know why I did those brackets, equals negative 2x to the 4, take 2x cubed plus x squared. Okay, so now we need to think, well, where's our coefficient of our x cubed coming from? Well, it's going to be here, so we can say, well, n take 3 is equal to negative 2, so n is going to be equal to 1. Okay, so n is going to be equal to 1. Okay. Right, then we need to look, okay, well, what's our coefficient of x squared? Okay, well, that is our negative 2 plus p. Okay, and that's got to be equal to our x squared one, which is 1. Okay, so from there, we can just see that p is equal to 3. Okay, and see, over here, we have no x term, so our p plus our q must equal 0. Okay, p is 3. Okay, therefore, q has to equal 0. Uh, sorry, not 0. q has to equal negative 3. So in the end, m equals negative 2, n equals 1, p equals 3, and q equals negative 3. Okay. So that brings us to the end of our first tutorial for chapter 1.